Hi everyone and welcome back to Luna Domenica, the place where we use makeup as therapy. And in today's therapy session we're going to do a 1950s inspired Valentine's makeup look. So this is going to be very fun, it's going to be a bit of shiny, a bit Marilyn Monroe, a bit flirty. So let's get into it, shall we? I start with a red lip liner, I start with a red lip liner, winging out that eyeliner. Luna Domenica. So we started off camera by doing my hair in kind of a quite sleek, easy updo. I'm not a hairstylist, but uh, I did okay, I think. And I also did my base off camera because I want this to be more focused on the eyes and the lips. And if you want a more dedicated skin tutorial or a contour tutorial, just let me know. So I'm going to start off with the eyebrows today. And I'm going to use this kit. By Anastasia Beverly Hills in blonde with this Beauty Express for brows and eyes. I'm just going to use this powder here, which is, a, is their brow powder in blonde. So this is the, the exact same as you can buy loose. You don't need to buy the entire kit to get it. And I'm using the angle brush that it came with. Just brushing my brows up and then brushing them down. That might seem a bit backwards, but that way I can go in with the powder underneath where my brow hairs are. I'm using powder today because I want a bit more of the feel of the 1950s in a way. I don't think they had brow pencils back then, they might have, but they used a lot of powders, I think. And I'm just mixing the darkest and the lightest color. And I'm also going to use this look quite modern with a bit of inspiration from the 50s and old Hollywood glam. I mean, like, who doesn't want to think that they are Marilyn Monroe when they're on a date? Wow! I mean, like, she's uh, very beautiful. But she did struggle quite a bit with her mental health. And then I'm brushing the brows over the top, and here I just go in, kind of filling it in, like, I'm doing some brow strokes. So that's it, really, on the brows. I used a old Anastasia brush which is flat in this end and then has this spoolie thing. So for eyes I'm going to use this gorgeous palette by Papagraph. Let's use all the fingerprints. These are impossible to clean. Like you see this is bronze seduction. This has very gorgeous tones. This is one of the palettes that I got from Pat McGrath when I won the competition by Sephora Scandinavia. When I did a look and I won. So, better get this to use then. So, I'm just going to start off with the bronzy color hair in my crease. They had quite a defined crease back in the 50s and I'm using a Pat McGrath Labs brush. This came with an eyeshadow once, I don't really know if it's sold individually or not, but I like this brush. And starting quite soft with a little pressure and I'm holding at the end of the brush which is important when you're doing things you want to be soft because then you have less pressure. Just kind of flicking it in back and forth with my crease. And I also think I'm going to use a bit of glitter today. I don't know if glitter was that common back in the 50s. It was invented in 1934. I don't think it took off more in the 70s and uh, 80s, 90s modern glitter, but it was invented, so they might have used it. There's a lot of glitter and glam in general in Hollywood, so... As you can see, I defined my crease fairly well. I'm also going to kind of brush it a bit out because I'm going to wing out my eyeliner today. So a great tip to kind of make it look as it's supposed to be one eye look is to kind of Wing it a bit out the eyeshadow also, as you can see I'm doing right now. As opposed to have the rounded shape and then an eyeliner, if that makes sense. And we always talk a lot about my Pat McGrath's shimmers, but I think her masks are quite phenomenal too.
So now I'm changing brushes to a pencil brush by Smudge Brush is called by Charlotte Tilbury and going into the darker brown shade here. And I'm going to go kind of into the socket more and kind of create a more well defined socket. And this is quite a bit more makeup than I usually wear on a date. But I mean like if it's something a bit more special I might do a bit more makeup. If it's something fairly new I might not do makeup at all for a date because I want to think about what I'm saying not necessarily be distracted by the makeup. And also, I've been quite fed up lately by boys who doesn't like makeup. For me, makeup is more about kind of a creative, artistic process and also a bit of ther therapy. I mean, like, how you feel can change so much with makeup. And also, sometimes if I'm super scared about something and I do a makeup, it might help me. Even though it's not necessarily pretty makeup, if it makes sense. Like, I did a makeup about monsters under the bed. Once... And uh, actually, this might be a bit silly to be afraid of monsters under the bed when you're in your 20s, but I was a bit. And then I did the makeup and I took some pictures underneath the bed. I mean, like, I, I didn't really fit underneath the bed, I just had my feet underneath the bed and bit my legs and stuff, but not really much else. And that fear kind of went away, because it was kind of therapeutic to do that makeup, if it makes sense. So now I think I'm going to switch off and use a blender brush by Charles Tilbury. This is quite similar to the Pat McGrath brush I used in the beginning. I'm going into the lighter shade here, which is the shimmery shade, and I'm going to use this over the lid. Wow, I love this. And I think I'm going to go in with the same shade underneath the brow. Just give me a bit of brow highlight. I think they had that back in the day. I'm going to just take the same lighter brown shade as I used in the beginning on the smudge brush and go underneath. I'm brushing off a bit on the back of my hand also to not get a too harsh application. Should I do it? Should I do it? Yes, I think I'm do, going to do it. I Sometimes when I do a look like this, I like to do a trick that I've seen Marilyn Monroe do a lot. Well, I haven't seen her do it. I've seen in pictures that she'd done it, if that makes sense. But she takes her underneath color and she applies it a bit out like this. So when she has the lashes on, it looks like a bit of shadow from the lashes. And it's quite effective in making her eyes look huge. So I'm going to use that a teeny bit, very soft. Just patting over it with my finger so it's not barely kind of visible. Just a teeny bit out there. And then I can go in with a more smudge, more teeny brush, pencil brush. Also by Charles Tilbury, and just travel size. And go into the lightest color that I use on the lid. And just do this in between. Kind of accentuates that. See. I'm gonna have the lashes on and everything. It will look a bit like a shadow in pictures and stuff. And in real life also, hopefully. So now I've finished up both eyes underneath and on top. So now I'm going to go in with the eyeliner. I'm going to use Pretty Easy Eyeliner by Clinique. And when you're doing eyeliner, it can be a good idea to rest your elbow on a table so you have more control. And I like to do look down into the mirror and also look up to kind of put my wing where I want it. Like so, and now I'm going to do the other eye. And I'm also going to wing this out. D 
Then to do the liner, I'm going to look directly into a mirror. Kind of following the lash line up, like so. And also following a bit of what I've done with the eyeshadow. I'm just feeling that and the other eye. So, that's uh, pretty even. So now I'm going to go to a bit of tight lining. And to tight line I'm going to use Rock and Coal by Charlotte Tilbury in Bedroom Black. And to tighten line I like to look down into a mirror and apply this to the kind of waterline. This for me makes a huge difference when wearing eyeliner. But this is a bit hard in the beginning, so I mean like it's not like you need to do it. Kind of fills out any gaps. I don't know if you can see the difference between the eyes. Now I'm going to do my lashes. She's using a old eyelash curler. You know, something is old and you don't even know where it's from. Legendary lashes by Charles Tilbury. Just going to clean up a few mistakes. So I'm going to apply lashes today. I'm using this one, Rimas. Their lashes in 405. And this is just some corner lashes. I prefer corner lashes over full strip, also because I feel like it gives my eyes a bit more beautiful shape. And for the glue, I'm using duo glue brush on. So I'm just going to take this off like so and apply my lash glue. Make sure I have to have an even coat, not too much. And I'm just waiting for it to dry because I want it to be as tacky as possible. And yes I do use my lashes several times, I just wash them in between. And when doing lashes it can be a good idea to kind of have your mirror pointed up at you so you can see more underneath and then kind of popping it on. Like so. And it emphasizes the wing I have on my eyes. So I go and brush off a bit on the lid before I go on to the lashes. Personally I'm not the biggest fan of using tweezers because I'm just too afraid to get my tweezers into my eyes. But fingers works well also. Looking down into the mirror and just kind of popping it on. Just see it gives me a little bit extra oomph. So now I'm going to go on to lips and I think I'm going to use more an ombre lip just to get the effect that I want. A bit inspired by Marilyn Monroe who used a lot of different lip products at once to get these kind of very pouty lips. So I'm going to start off with Lip Pencil by Lisa Eldridge in Jazz. And I'm just going to kind of create a stain. Just to give me an idea of where I want to kind of correct the lips or 
Make them a bit bigger. And I'm going to blot it. Not much coming off at this state. I also want to add that I did use a bit of lip balm and my makeup in the beginning so it could sink in. So to darken up even more I'm going to go in with an other lip pencil by Lisa Eilish. This is in Midnight. It's kind of a dark vampy color and just apply it on the outside. Using a lip brush by Sensei, I think. Doesn't say anything on it. Blot again. Going in with a Q-tube around the edges. Also going to perfect the edges with a bit of concealer. Then for lipstick, I'm going to go into Cinnabar. But it's average how I play with light and so today mash them together blot then going in with a bit of concealer taking the same concealer that I used on the face squeeze a bit on the back of my hand taking this flat brush and working it into the brush and Going into a pink lip pencil again. Going into the other lip pencil again. Just going back and forth, kind of building the layers and blending it out. Madame Monroe herself is said to have used about seven different lip pencils. And three different lipsticks and some things like that. So, well, she knows. And then I'm going to put lip gloss on top of this entire thing. And this is Cinnabar by Lisa Eldridge. Mix the lips together. Blot it again. Not for the inside this time. So don't get it on a teeth. I mean, this is probably a very much a high maintenance lip for a date. But if you want something easier, just use the lip gloss, for example. Or just use a lipstick and blot it so that it doesn't transfer. Then, as a bit of fine touch, I'm going to go into this white shimmering color here. It's very beautiful as you can see from the Black McGrath palette and I'm going to pop this onto my eyelid because I need a bit more shimmer. But you can just leave it, it's very beautiful as it is. But you can also do a bit of this and this is going to look incredible. I'm trying to not get it over the eyeliner, but I might go in and just touch up a few places. I'm going to do my under eye, which is Bobby Brown Porcelain Bisque, which is quite a cult classic, I would say. It's perfect for underneath the eye to brighten and all that. And I'm patting with my ring finger because it's the weakest finger. I think I need a bit more highlight. Whenever you look at Marilyn Monroe in pictures, she has this amazing glow. So I'm going to go back in with the Lisa Eldridge. I have a little elevated glow in Crystal Nebula. And just add a teeny bit right in there. A teeny bit into the inner corner also. A bit on the nose. I'm not going to do the top lip because I don't want to ruin the lipstick. 
and just pat, 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 pat. See. It gives me this kind of wet shine in a way. Which I mean like is perfect for a 1950s Marilyn Monroe inspired look. And then I'm going to go on to blush. I'm going to use the Lisa Eldridge Enlivening Blush in Ice and Glow. Just a teeny bit. And I feel like cream blush was probably more common back then. I feel. Just a teeny bit. Making me look less washed out. Now I'm going to use a teeny bit of powder. I'm going to use Nude Air by Dior. I watched one of those old kind of makeup tutorials from the 50s. And they used a ton of powder. I'm using Linda Hallberg Spun Buff Puff. I think it is called Puff. It's triangle, which is going to be great to get it underneath the eyes and not get it into any highlighting bits. So I'm just going to put a bit of this and then go right in here. And not kind of touch the highlight and not touch the highlight into the inner corner. Like so. Just right in there. And this is going to make sure that it's going, not going to move. And that's it for powder for me because I'm not really a powder girl. I mean like I had this for ages and this is the only, almost the only powder I have. On top of Crystal Nebula into the inner corner I think I'm going to go into the original color I had on the lid. And just pop a bit of this into there also, just to amp up the shine a bit. And perhaps a teeny bit here. And I'm done! This is my 1950s Valentine's look. I mean like, it's a perfect look if you're in a relationship and you want to vibe a bit. I mean like, especially now when we've been in lockdown and we probably just walk around in pyjamas or something like that. So, we're dressing up a bit. Might be a bit cool and a bit special for Valentine's. Why not wear this on a date? I would. I absolutely love this makeup. I would perhaps, if I'm wearing this on a date, I might not do the lips, but do more of a kind of nude lip. So, I just wish you a wonderful Valentine's Day. If you want more of a natural Valentine's look, look at my tutorial from last year, which is more kind of pillow talk natural. And remember, makeup should be fun and use it as therapy. Until next time, bye bye. Or as we say in Norway, ha det bra! I start with a red lip planner, I start with a red lip planner, winging out that eyeliner. Do you know Dominica? Do you know Dominica?